Hey everyone, it's Alan Schimmel, DevOps.com, DevOps TV, and we're here in Las Vegas for IBM Think 2018. Joined by a, a couple of the folks from Lloyd's Bank who came over the pond to us. This gentleman you might recognize, Mark Halcrow. We've spoken to Mark at IBM conferences, does conferences all over the place. Yeah, yeah, we say. And, and uh, Mark's brought along James McLeod, yep. not from the Highlander <laughs> movie, but James, welcome. Thank you. And you know what? We actually just dragged both of these fellows in from a, a presentation they just finished That's here right. yep, yep. at IBM Think. And you know, I'm going to assume most people watching this on YouTube were in here. So why don't we give them a little preview? What was your presentation on, guys? So um, it was a presentation on how we foster engineering culture, how we build that picture internally at Lloyd's. Um, what we've been doing is, as we were just, just discussing, a very key thing for me in 18 this year will be how we look at the cultural aspect of DevOps, mm -hmm. how we do a lot of branding. So I've put a lot of time into our branding, building out some common messages internally and getting people to challenge themselves on how they want to work together and how they connect their, with people and build their own networks. Um, and as part of that as well, we've done a piece of work in collaboration with IBM on GitHub Enterprise. Oh, really? So, so James has been excellent in that space, sort of taking the charge on that particular issue. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, James can fill you in with. Yeah, yeah, so um, within, the DevOps, within the DevOps space, we've really kind of accelerated our velocity um, and also improved our quality. Um, so I'm a software engineering lead within, um, within Lloyd's. Um, but what we actually want to do, because we've got um, FinTech kind of biting at our tails, we want to make sure that we kind of get this engineering culture where we're collaborating together. Um, so what we've done with our DevOps engineers and also our software engineers is come together to, de to decide and de to determine the type of um, version control software we, we would like to use within Lloyd's. Um, and we settled on uh, GitHub Enterprise as, a, as an engineering group um, because it means that we can kind of like collaborate, you know, within yeah. um, our own sandboxed environment. We can share our code and we can take that kind of um, acceleration a little bit further by doing something called InnerSource, um, mm -hmm. which is like software engineering, but it allows us to share each other's code and share each other's libraries. And all of this sits within our DevOps pipeline um, because we need to make sure that um, everything that we develop is um, secure and also um, uh, scalable, and we don't introduce regression with all of these accelerated you know, hard, um, software cycles that we go through. Excellent. So let, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up, because so let's, uh, I don't know if you've ever watched like uh, David Attenborough's Wild uh, Planet, Planet Earth and stuff from yep. Blue Planet. You know, I'd love to be able to take away the backside of the bird's nest and see how, I'd, I'd like to yeah. understand the thinking. I get that you pick GitHub Enterprise, not yeah. a bad choice, right? You've got a private label or a private version of GitHub for your That's own right. use. But from a DevOps culture point of view, if you can, don't say anything obviously that's uh, proprietary or not allowed, but what went in? How culturally, how did you make this decision to arrive at GitHub Enterprise? Right, so that, that is actually a really um, excellent question. Um, so within uh, Lloyd's, we're actually, actually fostering kind of like an engineering-led uh, culture, mm -hmm. um, and we're introducing communities and guilds. Um, which means that rather than one person like myself or Mark landing on the decision to go with GitHub Enterprise, we actually went out to uh, the engineering community and we said, well, the, actually, funnily enough, the engineer, uh, engineering community came to us and said, within the version control systems that we're using right now, we can't develop together. You know, we're siloed. The organization and the way that it's matured has kind of put systems in place that makes um, collaboration within engineering really hard. We need to change it, right? And so as I'm um, a guild organizer, I said, I'm not going to uh, tell you um, which system we should be using. You tell me which system you would like. Um, and so what we did, we lined up all of the different version control systems that were out there, open source and also licensed. Um, and we kind of went through and compared them and we kind of ticked off you know, the features that these um, version control systems have. And we kind of aligned to it in a debate, you know, around the engineers. And so, so there was a, a natural debate around it? Yeah, yeah, there was, yeah. And because... So, I'm sorry, Jim. Was it a committee that was appointed on this or was it the whole guild, so to speak? So we were in a guild meeting 
and everyone was screaming about how they needed to collaborate, right? It was a common theme from one guild meeting to the next. So what, what I did um, was center um, our talking around that problem. So we owned the problem. So the front end guild, which um, I helped to organize, owned the collaboration problem. Because I knew that if um, I kind of escalated it up to higher management, it wouldn't get sold. You know, somebody had to kind of like go out there and pioneer it. And so that's what we did. And then we kind of formed um, a working group called, um, yeah, okay. yeah, which then came together and kind of did all of these various different activities and then invited other engineers in to kind of talk about it and to shape it. And rather than um, just bring GitHub Enterprise into the bank, both myself and Mark worked to set it up in kind of like a test and learn environment where we all went in there and started playing with it. And so we had a feature team come in and we had various different um, inner source teams come in just to make sure that the system would actually behave in the way that we would like. And it's kind of snowballed from there. Yeah. It's kind of started to grow out from there. And so it's been a real kind of like engineering led um, initiative. Did you, did you do similar to with any other solution besides GitHub? Enter you don't have to name names, but were there other yeah. trials or whatever you want to call it? Well, as James was saying, right, what we're trying to do is get engineers talking to engineers and have a community feel to these sort of things. So gone are the days where someone decides you will use this right. because uh, you know we've bought it from software vendor X or whatever. But there are various bits of technology around you know virtualization, around build, um, build tools, things like that. We would want to go out and ask the engineering teams what do they want to do, what do they want to get out of it, you know, right. how do you want to use the tool and get them as part of the uh, the engineering decisions, you know. Yep. Yeah. So. At the end of the day, and this is an interesting thing because this goes well above software engineering, it goes to humanity. Was there a consensus reached? So Obviously, you made a choice. Yeah. But was it a top down, this, okay, you've had your, everyone had their fun, this is what I think we should use? Yeah. Or was there truly a consensus of, you know, the, the, the guild came together and said, yeah, th this is it? So um, within Lloyd's, we uh, enable federation. Right, so we um, allow our feature teams to go out there and test and learn different solutions that work for them. Mm -hmm. um, and so through the history of that federated process, there are um, some teams out there who have kind of sought their own solution. Um, but because I kind of um, really believe in kind of like collaboration across the engineering group, um, I kind of use that as like the topic. And what I'm actually trying to do now is come out into the world and talk about it because um, I don't want there to be kind of like a, um, a dictatorial kind of like, this is right. what you must use now. It needs to be like a value kind of like service. So we're providing the tool um, in a very open way where our engineers can see how it's being maintained. They can have the discussion with the, the operations guys. They can see what inner source means and then they choose to come in. And so I don't want it to be kind of like a a pyramid of, you know, you must do this because right. that drives the wrong behavior. But just to pick up on that now, so for another product, though I'm not going to name, but, mm -hmm. but we had the exact same uh, approach and what we ended up with the consensus, as you say, you can't keep everybody happy. Everyone's not going to vote for the same Your thing. Life doesn't work yeah, like yeah. that. But as long as you can have a sensible conversation about, well, for the most, for 85% of the people, this is the solution that yeah, makes yeah. best sense for yeah, them. And 85%, God yeah. bless you, I mean, in my mind, if you could get a super majority, 66%, yeah. Yeah. that's consensus, right, yeah. in, in a group. Yeah. Uh, three people is one thing. But you get a group, let's say 30 people, whatever, yeah, that's it. or more. If you could get two-thirds of them are yeah. behind one solution, I think that's a consensus. Well, that's a pretty And we're in a world now whereby, so the guys that didn't get the solution they wanted because of this bit of functionality, whatever, we have such good relationships with all of our partners. You know, we have the conversation and drive their roadmaps. Sure. But it's about building yeah. that engineering, you know, led community into the organizations and coming back to GitHub yeah. Enterprise, we've built some great relationships with the IBM engineers on the ground. Sure. We spent time yeah. with them this week and they want to yeah. help us. They want to come into our teams. They want to help embed it because yeah. we can't just give it to 8,000 people on day one. No. You know, we have to take a, you know, a mature approach plan it out carefully, make sure that you know, the messaging is right and the adoption is right so to, be, to make it a success. That's it, and so that whole working group who kind of owned the problem has now scaled to having Lloyd's engineers, IBM engineers, and even GitHub themselves are kind of part of it, helping us to steer it. Um, and the other thing that you need to realize is that um, this development approach is, is relatively new within the bank as well, and so we need to educate and show people how to do it as well. Fascinating. 
Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so you pick GitHub Enterprise, great, good choice. But has what has the experience of going through this process, how has it helped to foster, or has it not helped to foster, your engineering culture? Yeah, I is this kind of like it a has. rooted thing? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it does, because what you're doing is, is you're being more engaged and empowering those guys, making them part of the collective. Mm -hmm. It's about building that community of people and, and building the networks and getting trust involved as well, you know, especially with our engineers and, and the other engineers from the partners that we work with. It's been a great vehicle so that you get to know the other people on the side of the fence, you know, you understand where they're yeah. coming from, where their concerns are. And as a community then, I think it's very important to me, build the networks, meet the people, find out what makes people tick, yeah. build relationships. And ultimately, nobody comes to work to do a bad job, right? No. no. So, and that's where we go and we get to where we need to. Yeah, I was interviewing a, a gentleman earlier today, an IBMer from the IT Ops Automation team. And I asked him, kind of, what gets you excited in the morning? Why do you, you've been doing this job a while, what, what gets you excited? And, and he said something, he said, look, I like to feel that I'm contributing. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, that's <coughs> exactly. kind of a universal, right? People want to yep. feel that they're valuable to the team, that they are making a difference, that they are contributing. Yep. Like you say, no one raises their hand and says, I, I want to be a screw up, or I don't want to be valuable, or, you know, everybody wants to deliver value and be. So you know. we, we said that in our presentation. Um, we said by having this type of um, way of engineering and using a system that people actually recognize externally as well, because GitHub is kind of open source. Yeah. We can both collaborate uh, on the inside of the bank in a very safe, kind of secure way. And then the engineers who we, we would like to attract also know that we're using a system that, that they're, they're familiar, familiar with, with and, yeah, yeah. And, and like, like to work yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, because th that's the other thing, you know, again, it, it's about the humans, right? Yep. And um, who was it, Adri Adrian Cockcraft did, uh, at a DOES summit once gave a presentation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that the, your most valuable asset is your people. Yep. Yeah, it's true. And I think, in spite of what we hear about automation and AI and cognitive here, it, that hasn't changed. People still drive these organizations. Absolutely, and so and you know, and it's hard. It's going to get harder and harder to get those good people. Yeah. As yeah. as these things take root, so it's important that they they appreciate the the tool set that they're given. It's important that they're part of a culture yeah. where everyone is valued. And, and everyone gets input into how we are driving this. And I, I think that, and maybe I'm being naive, but that's going to set the winners from the losers. Yeah, completely. Going forward. Completely. Right, because we, we're moving into a different yeah. world, a and different you know, era. So, whereas two years ago we'd be talking about, you know, technology plays, now for me, as I said earlier on, this year is all about the people. Yeah. How do we unlock the potential there? And, you know, we've got to change belief systems. You know, we have to turn that oil tanker around. And when you have, you know, when you, you know, you're part of a system, you know, on a certain way of working, mm -hmm. it's not an overnight job to change. No, it, it's not. But, you know, we've got the right people. We've got great people. You know, we but try you need the right leadership, Mark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, yeah that's, yeah. that's what, I mean, I'm, I'm reminded back, you know, I, I co-founded a security company called Still Secure 2001. So 17 years ago. We, one of the things we had developed and sold was a vulnerability management system. I was talking with the CIO of a bank in New York, Wall Street Bank. Mm. It, went out of, it went out of business in 2008, actually. And uh, one of those. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was trying to explain to him that using our vulnerability management system, it had some, we didn't call it cognitive or AI then, but it had some logic yeah. that would say, okay, I scanned a Windows system so I don't have to worry about Linux yeah. uh, vulnerabilities, for instance. And that saves a lot of time, because if you've ever run a vulnerability report, you know. The big things, isn't it? Yeah, well, I used to call it job security. It was like the guys who paint <laughs> the bridges, right? They get the report, by the time they start here, by the time they get to the yeah. end of the book. They get start again. They gotta go paint the bridge again. So, <laughs> uh, but I told this CIO, I said, look, you use this kind of tool, you, you know, you're, 
I spoke to your vulnerability remediation team. They're working nights, weekends, yeah. and everything else just to keep up. They can't keep up. This will cut that workload down. They don't have to work. They'll spend the weekend with their kids. Yeah, yeah. And the CIO, I swear to God, he looked at me. He said, look, I pay these guys by the year. I don't pay them by the hour or the day. I don't oh. care if they come in on weekends. <laughs> and I looked, and that's when that I is. realized how hard it was going to be to sell security yeah, yeah. to CIOs <laughs> because they didn't value people. But, th but that's the thing, right? And so, and, and that is the driver for me and Mark coming over here is to be able to get a platform so we can actually, you know, kind of give the message that actually we, we do value our people. And you we have to. Yeah, and In we do. In today's world, you have to. And everybody's a contributor. You know, we want everybody to test, learn, have fun, you know, innovate, come up with new ideas and kind of, you know, change the culture of banking, you know, especially in Lloyd. Agreed. Well, guys, it sounds like you're doing a great job. I mean, Mark, we've been following your story now for three years. But James, I mean, you guys are doing great things here. Hope maybe to hear some more. Well, I'll be in London in we'll June as we yeah. were talking. Maybe we'll see you there. Yeah, yeah. definitely. We'll do it. Thanks for making the trip out as to usual. Las Vegas. Always a pleasure, Mark. James, you, pleasure you. meeting you. Um, the, the guys from Lloyd's, Lloyd's Bank. <laughs> Mark Halcrow, James McLeod. This is Alan Schimmel for DevOps.com and DevOps TV here at IBM Think 2018. Have a great day.